All right, so uh, ating nabasa, there seems to be a problem here. There seems to be a growing problem na nabanggit niya na bakit sila bumitaw. Parang there is a tendency that they are about to abandon or maybe some of them have uh, compromised the gospel that they have heard when uh, Paul was in their presence. And this he is trying to check and correct. And here it, uh, a growing problem seems in appears that there are weak believers. And these weak believers are becoming, they are falling prey to the uh, perverters. Yung mga tinatarget nilang baguhin ang pananampalataya na kanilang natamo kay Kristo Jesus na ibinahagi ni Apostol Pablo. And if you try to look at the, uh, the accounts in Acts and also uh, the book of Galatians, you will see that uh, ito mga perverters na ito are none others than some of the, the Jew. The apostles, even the apostles, they have become a part of the burden of uh, some of the apostles are, uh, have contributed to the burden of Apostle Paul in his ministry to the Gentiles. Kasi there is confusion at that time among the, uh, those Jewish uh, believers and the non-Jewish who are in uh, Paul was preaching salvation by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Pero yung mga Jews naman, they still uh, are considering some of the rituals that they have been uh, born into, which has been uh, a part of their culture. So, medyo meron pa rin sa kanila yung mga ibang gawain na parang sa akalin nila, kabahagi pa rin yun. And uh, some of them are being reverted, sabi sa commentaries sa... Uh, sa Bible that uh, they are being reverted back to uh, to uh, Judaism. So definitely this is the work of uh, either the Pharisees or uh, some of the errors of the other Christians also. In, in, as a matter of fact, it's, uh, it does not refer only to them, but this burden, this problem, is even, is also present sa ating panahon ngayon. So this is, uh, this seems to be in a different location. It is in a setting after the, uh, when the, uh, the gospel is just being spread. But the same problem arising from these perverters or uh, they, are, uh, they are targeting weak believers. So if we are weak, if our roots are not that grounded enough in the knowledge of our Lord, ano na yung sinabi doon? Duty without doctrine is fruit without foundation ba yun? Nakalimutan ko yun, ating pinag-aralan. So yun ang uh, kahinaan. And these false teachers are perverting none other than the gospel of God. So they confuse believers regarding the authenticity of the gospel. And they instigate these confused believers to even question the authority of Paul. Especially, Paul has not yet been fully accepted by even the other apostles yet. Especially so that they are aware of him to have been the one that is... Uh, persecuting these believers with a mission to uh, eradicate the Christians. So, uh, who are these Galatians naman? The Galatians are, uh, they are located in some parts in Turkey, in the middle part of Turkey, in the hinterlands. And they were once called as the, the Gauls who have rebelled against Rome. History, makikita natin na nagkaroon sila ng ugnayan with the Roman con conquerors at that time. They rebelled and they were subdued. Then they were made citizens of Rome. So by culture, they are not too far away from 
the culture of the Romans. And Paul has started working these churches in Galatia province on his first missionary journey, second and third. So all the while in all his missionary journeys, uh, nadadaanan niya at rinatrabaho niya itong Galatia province. Galatia is not a church, it is a province. And in Galatia, there are many churches in there that has been uh, established or uh, been uh, started by, by uh, Paul himself. Iconium, Derby, Lystra, ano pa yung mga andun. So ito yung kanyang mga... So he's not referring to only one. The problem is not only one church, but the entire province. wherein maraming mga churches scattered out north and south of uh, Galatia. And uh, ito ang particular problem. So, uh, how did they handle this problem? As we can see in what we have read, especially if we look a little uh, uh, before the uh, verses that we have read, starting in Galatians 1.3, we will see that uh, Paul refreshed them with a cordial greeting. So, medyo very careful siya. Alam niya that there is a problem. There is a question mark that has been inculcated in the minds of the uh, church believers about his authority. Uh, sino nag-authorize niyan? Eh, dati nga yan ang pangulo ng mga samahang sumisira sa ating paniniwala. No, things like that. So, there is that, uh, that, uh, that need to, uh, to authenticate himself among the believers, among those churches that they have established. So, uh, he greeted them cordially. Makikita natin sa ating, sa verse 3. Sabi niya, grace to you and peace from God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. So, makikita natin that he started this letter with the opening that he is known of. Siya ay kilalang kilala sa mga apostoles at that time to keep on using that word grace. Grace and peace unto you. Sa kanya daw ay uh, may komentary na nagsabi that are we going on with these slides? We have slides. We are supposed to be on. May slide ba tayo? Wala kayo natanggap. We're supposed to be on slide number one. Now we are now in slide number three. Okay, so pagpatuloy ko. Sabi dito ay um, he started this letter with the opening that he is known of grace. Sabi ko kanina and peace unto you. Among the apostles, he is the one who has used the word grace 100 times in his writings. So katangihan to na siya lang ang gumagawa dahil all the other apostles in their uh, communications, in their correspondences, uh, ang total nilang lahat is 66 lang. 66 times na na-mention nila yung uh, grace. So uh, si Paul is known to be the apostle of grace. Dahil talagang every time he speaks, na may mention na yung uh, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. So dito, after uh, greeting them, he started to reestablish them. He reestablishes them in the doctrinal truth of the gospel. Kasi nga, they, uh, if they are being... Uh, being convinced of a new teachings or new gospels, that means they are weak in their knowledge. They, are, uh, they, uh, they lack the knowledge about their doctrines of salvation that can make them fully submit and obey to our God. So uh, when people are in doubt, it is because of lack of knowledge. Lack of understanding, lack of trust in what is written in God's Word. They may know it, but they don't trust it also. They don't have faith in what they have known. 
So, uh, from our past lessons, we always say that in order to get that, uh, that knowledge be digested into your being, uh, apply it in fellowshipping. You have to be intermingling the greatest problems of, uh, of uh, behavior of persons, more, most sensitive is in the church itself. Marabi mga sensitive dyan. And being uh, a believer in Christ, this is what we need to be exposed to so that we'll be able to uh, address them in a godly manner. Now, uh, and then as you develop this kind of character inside fellowshipping in the church, it will become your nature that you can apply it in the outside world. Because usually, first, Iba pa yung character sa church, iba yung character sa labas. In the labas, you tend to be the same with them until you are fully developed inside the church, having adapted, having, uh, having been refined by continuous exposure to the irritations that you get among the fellow brethren. Kasi when dealing with the fellow brethren, Medyo may control ka because you are aware that uh, you are within the confines of your fellow believer. And you are fully aware that that person you are dealing with is a child of God as well. So, naiiba ang treatment. But you have to start somewhere. And the best place to start them is the church. Through face-to-face fellowshipping. Okay, so sana tayo. Baka maligaw tayo. So, uh, he refreshed them regarding, of course, doctrines. He was reminding them that this doctrine, the gospel of God, is the will of God. Sabi niya rito sa, is that in verse 6? Or verse 4. Let's read verse 4. Sabi niya, Galatians. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil word according to the will of God and our Father. Now, seeking the will of God, if we confine only ourselves to that particular word, will of God, parang that is only surface. But if you try to dig deeper, you will know that this plan, paulit-ulit ko ito nasasabi, has been started right after Adam and Eve were exiled. The proof, you can check with Genesis 3.15. Makikita niyo ron, sabi ni God, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That is being addressed to uh, Satan. And of course, we know that the, uh, the bruising of the seed of the woman, uh, bruising the heel that, is, that happened at the crucifixion. It was fulfilled at the crucifixion to Jesus. And the uh, bruising of his head, the crushing of his head, will happen at the time that he will be thrown into the lake of fire for eternity. So, for a thousand years, rather. So, yun yung, uh, that was the, uh, uh, the proto-evangel that they, uh, yun yung first mention of uh, salvation by faith. So, uh, it has been repeated, reiterated by the prophets. And as we all know, through history, it has been fulfilled by Jesus at the crucifixion. So that is the will of God. And that is the only purpose that Jesus came. And that is the only truth that the apostles proclaimed to, to the point of dying for it. And it is the same message that we are carrying on. Being, uh, being mocked, being rejected, as they were during the olden times. It is the same treatment that we are getting in this world, but it is the truth that they need that they will be able to 
re- be reconciled with God the Father who has, who has sentenced all of them to, uh, to face the penalty in hell. And that is the only way that they can abolish that uh, penalty that is imposed upon them. Abolish because once they accept the one that has already paid for it, none other than our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, their penalty is already paid. Their, uh, their future destination has been changed. Book for hell, canceled, replaced with a reservation in heaven. So yun ang uh, doctrine na inihahayag ni Apostle Pablo that is being stained, being perverted by, by the other people that are after that are trying to abort the plan of God to reconcile the sinful people with God, the Holy God. So, he reestablished them, reminding them that there is no other uh, doctrine that you need to learn. But this doctrine that I, sabi niya, that, I have, that the apostles have preached unto you. So, uh, number three, sabi dyan, is reject all other Gospels that are not being taught by the Apostles. So, it has been established na yung ating pre-preach is the same thing that has been preached by the Apostles, which has been uh, officially uh, declared by Jesus, uh, God when Adam and Eve left uh, the Garden of Eden and uh, prophesied by prophets, and then proven or finalized, realized by Jesus at the cross at Calvary. And so, ang sinasabi niya, reject all other gospels that are not taught by the apostles. Even, sabi niya sa verse 8, even if it is being shared by an angel, so, uh, even an angel. So, dito eh, hindi angel eh. Just people proclaiming that they are the new anointed son of God and people believe. He's not even an angel. He is just an ordinary preacher, a dynamic one that has been a part also of, uh, I believe, uh, he might have been a Baptist as well. <laughs> And he has gained that uh, charisma that he has uh, capitalized on his uh, attractive smile, having uh, drawn a lot of followers, and he's not even an angel. But the warning that has been given by Paul, even if it is an angel, if it is not the same doctrine that are being taught by the apostles, reject it. Yan ang strong, firm, uh, firm statement niya. Even if they claim that it is new revelation or addition or changes, reject it. Parang naririnig natin yan ngayon, ano, di ba? Parang ito ngayon ang bagong daan, ito ngayon ang bagong paliwanag, ito ang bagong revelation, ito ang pagbabago. Tapos na si Kristo ako ngayon ang kapalit. Meron pa tayo man naririnig na ganon. But uh, according to Paul, addressed to the Galatians, sinabi niya, reject. Reject other Gospels that are being taught that are not, that has not been taught by the Apostles. So, uh, it has been established that what we are hearing from our pastors, from our preachers and missionaries, are the same things that were being preached and proclaimed by the apostles. So we are sure. So if these people, even if they are angels or dress as an angel, reject them, even if they claim things that are new revelations or additions or changes, even if they do miracles, sabi pa dito, Revelation 16, 14, let's read that one. Ang sabi niya ay, for they are the spirits of devils, working miracles. Di ba maraming miracles na nangyayari? 
Sinasabi nila yung statwa na yun nagluluha ng dugo. O yung tao na yan na pabuhay niya yung patay. Ayun na palakad niya yung bulag. Mga faith healers yan. So people are now beginning to accept them as saints. They even worship them. They even channel their prayers to God through them. That is errors. It is a part of the things that are to be rejected according to Paul, even if they create miracles, because these evil spirits, according to what we have read, can also do miracles. So let us not be confused. Sana those online that are still believing in people that, have, that are manifesting uh, some uh, supernatural things in their life, which are being believed to be uh, people that are being used by God. And then when they teach things, they do not point to Christ Jesus as the only way, the truth, and the life. They uh, do not mention that. They may seem to be uh, the number one group of religious groups, but they do not point to Jesus Christ. They do not teach the gospel that has been taught by, by the apostles. So they fall under the category by which Paul had said, reject them because they are not teaching what the apostles have been teaching. And so, if they have succeeded to drift you, there are remedies provided by the Lord. Makikita natin doon that uh, number four, ang last eye, of course, once you are made aware of these things, that you are drifting unto the doctrine that they are trying to get you in. Sabi dito, I return to where you were removed. Bumalik ka lang. That's simple. In the later years, si Paul wrote to Timothy about the Bible. Sinabi niya ay, uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. So after having been corrected by rechecking on your doctrines and believing by faith that this is the word that can give us as the guidance for our reproof. So once you are being reproved, sabi dyan ay uh, return. Yung sabi niya rito, reproof is letting you know that you are falling into error after reading your Bible and then you were convicted, you were made aware na mali pala yung ginawa ko. Then it gives you a way to be corrected he directs you to the right path so that, sabi dito, for the instruction unto righteousness, that you, the man of God, will be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto good works. Good works. So dito natin makikita that the, the vitality of God's word. We need to be, uh, we need to be um, exposed to it. We need to be checking it. It has to be our, our life, our life book to give us the guidance, to give us the correction, to give us that conviction so that we will always be made aware and be alerted when we are wrong. And another one is that um, when you have identified yourself as stated by, by uh, Paul, through his letter to Timothy, uh, be like that son, a uh, prodigal son in Luke 15, who are in uh, conditions, situations in life, has brought him to that condition. To know that he has wasted his life by having taken out his portion. Alam niyo yung kwento ng prodigal sana yan, yung uh, buhay pa yung ama, eh, kinukuha na niya yung yaman niya. <laughs> At ang bait naman ni ama, binigay naman niya. Alam niyang makakasama sa kanya, but uh, you know, sometimes uh, there is a way that God allows it. No? 
allows you to experience the words that can come upon your life that you might be awakened. You are being brought to that level of uh, going rock bottom into sin so that that body will suffer from what will become out of it and that the soul might be saved. Yun ang, uh, this is the story that has happened to the life of the prodigal son that uh, it went to a point in his life that uh, when he has uh, squandered all his money, wala na siyang nalalabing perang pagkain man lang. Siya ay naglingkod, nagtrabaho, at uh, na kinakain na niya yung pagkain ng kanyang hayop na pinapakain. So uh, he was in abject need of food. And so he went to that point of repentance. He, uh, sabi niya, he fell on his neck. Uh, where is this? He came to that point of realizing that his hired workers, the fad, uh, his father's hired servants are being treated better than him. That he realized that he need not go back as a son because he has violated, he has sinned against his father in heaven. So that is an act of sincere repentance, wanting to return even no longer as a son, but as a servant. And of course, we know the story. The father has been expecting his return. And yun, pinabalik siya. So uh, these are the things that we need to do. First, be, uh, be alarmed that the, uh, the same perverters that are present in the days of Paul are still present. And they're even more skillful, more subtle, mahirap mapuna. <laughs> they are disguised as, uh, as, as priests, holy men, holy men of God. And they are very well accepted by the men that are ignorant of the truth. And they are uh, even more powerful. They can influence the governments. And that is the direction that, is, uh, that uh, pictures uh, the events that will happen during the end times. That this uh, powerful leader will, uh, will, might be the Antichrist. You know? He will represent uh, to be the Christ who is the hope of the nations, the nations, especially at a time like this. A lot of nations are, uh, are threatening war against their neighbors with threatening uh, uh, weapons of destruction. And then uh, also we are hearing a lot of uh, destructive uh, flying objects that might hit the earth, which are all uh, part of the... Uh, the things that may happen during the time of, of uh, the tribulation period, uh, the future events, and wars that are happening in different places, and pestilence and famines, and general hat. It is complete. And the same problem that is affecting these people during the time of Paul, the same is also affecting us. So from this lesson that we have seen, let us be just like the Galatians. As the words that are given by Paul to the Galatians is also extended to us because the problems of the time of the Galatians is also present in our time and even more worse. But of course, we are also better equipped than the Galatians. We now have the Bibles in ourselves, not only the uh, hardbound book, but even in, uh, in applications in, uh, with this technology. They are all at our fingertips. So that means we, we do not have any excuse. We cannot say that, ah, hindi ko pa kasi nabasa yan. Nabasa mo sana kung binasa mo. So, uh, we have all the facilities that we need. There is no more excuse for us not to become aware, not to become uh, knowledgeable 
about the truthfulness of the gospel that is God's will. If we miss that, it is not because there is no source of information. We have all of the source of information. We have the church services. We have the Sunday school. We have the, uh, the workers that knocks on your doors. If you will still miss that uh, vital information about the gospel of salvation, it is not because you were not aware of it. You are ignoring it. It's either you know it, but you are rejecting it, or you're not taking it seriously. So, in conclusion, refresh with uh, Paul, address it with uh, refreshing, their, with cordial greetings. And then he reestablishes the doctrine of salvation, which is very important. That should, that should never be, uh, that should never be bended left or right. There should, it should never be stained with other doctrines. There should be no plus or minus. It is purely by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. There is no plus or minus. Reject all other gospels that are being taught that are not of the doctrines taught by the apostles. And then once you have identified that you are drifting away by having been made aware perhaps by reading your Bible or somebody telling you there is a way. You can still return to where you have been this lads. Amen. All right, let's uh, close with a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for uh, letting us know about the incident during the time of Paul in the book of Galatians making us aware, dear Father, and reminding us that those problems are not problems of the past, but uh, problems that are continuing on and even increasing in its uh, decisiveness, Lord, that people can easily be uh, swayed to accept it as truth. So, dear Father, we pray na sana po ay our brethren will continue to uh, check with their Gospels, check with their Bibles, continue to increase their knowledge about you, Lord, that they shall not be easily be deceived. And may they learn to continue to obey, Lord, not so that they will be saved, because we were taught, their Father, that salvation is by grace through faith in Christ. But to increase knowledge is for the purpose of enjoying obeying God's commands. So, the Father, once again, maraming salamat po. Bless each and everyone that are here present and also those who have heard God's word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so now we go into our prayer time as we, uh, as we uh, have always practiced. We will uh, pray for the church's concern. We will ask Brother Amil to pray for that uh, list of prayer concerns after which we will get our offering and then after that again we will dismiss the uh, audience online then we will go on to our on-site activity okay brother Emil Hello, hello. Hello. Good evening po. Sige, dako po tayo sa ating prayer time. So, nakikita naman natin sa ating mga prayer list. Yan po yung mga dapat natin pag-pray. Yung ating past. 